Guys, Sam here with Between the Bumpers. Uh, I wanted to do this video because I've been getting a lot of questions from the online training team about how to build muscle and actually how to sustain muscle because a lot of you have actually put on muscle mass but only really been able to hold it for a short while. So I put together four tips that I think most of you will probably benefit from and they're a result of four mistakes that most of you are probably making. So the first one has to do with protein consumption. So you hear a lot of information about protein intake. Some people saying you should limit it as much as possible. Others saying you need to get two, three, four times as much grams per pound of body weight. Uh, I just want to give you a simple, easy to follow suggestion that most people will benefit from. So what that is, is based on your body weight. So if you weigh 160 pounds, very simply try and get 160 grams of protein. Okay. If you weigh 180, try and get 180 grams. This is a very good rule of thumb for both men and women to follow. Uh, obviously when it comes to diet, there's more than just the protein intake. So if you are interested in that or our nutrition coaching service, we can talk more about that. But again, for this video, I wanted to keep it very simple. Per one gram per pound of body weight. Try that in terms of your diet. Now onto the training side of things. The biggest mistake I would think I see in most intermediate lifters is they're not lifting heavy enough and so what I mean by that is in bodybuilding we all know it's all about lifting light weights for a lot of reps and that's what elicits the hypertrophic response but when we are actually looking at most people they tend to neglect the other end of the spectrum which is heavy lifting okay so when you actually lift light weights what happens is you are getting hypertrophy in the slow twitch muscle fibers but when you lift heavy you activate your fast twitch fibers as well as your slow twitch and you're able to get hypertrophy across the entire muscle spectrum in your muscle belly basically all you need to know is it helps you put on muscle mass so try and actually get the heavy lifting in as well a lot of people tend to avoid that thinking that it's lightweight lots of reps and short rest but the other end of the spectrum can actually have a great benefit to your strength and your muscle mass gain as well the next piece i would say is try and do more isolation work and this is especially true for the crossfit community where a lot of people just love to stick with functional movements. Again, I'm not saying functional movements are bad by any means, but if you tend to exclusively do full body movements, you are missing out on a huge potential to actually put on size and mass. So try and get those isolation exercises, whether it's bicep curls, tricep extensions, unilateral leg work, that stuff is going to do a lot for you. And for those of you who are functional fitness, you know, diehards who don't believe in that style of training, one thing I will say, especially for the shoulder joint, it can do a ton for reducing your risk of injury in the butterfly, kip pull-ups, things of that nature. And that is why things like the crossover symmetry have become so big in CrossFit because that style of training where we work on the isolation exercises actually can do a lot for making the shoulder capsule more robust and able to handle the higher loads and volume associated with CrossFit. And the last thing is you're either getting too comfortable with your programming or you are changing things up too much. So what I mean by this last one is there's a lot of people who find one or two exercises that they love and they stick with that and they don't change anything about it. So they may do the same deadlift protocol for six, eight, 10, 12 weeks. And after a certain period of time, you know, they're gonna lose those gains, those adaptations. 
And on the other end of the spectrum, you have those people who try a new exercise every day. They see something on Instagram, they give it a go. Their friend tells them to try this movement, they give that a go, and they never really stick to a plan for a long period of time. Now you need to fall somewhere in the middle of those two. So with a training program, you're looking for at least three to six weeks of doing the same movements. If you want a strong adaptation through progressive overload, so adding more weight as the weeks go on. But at the same time, you don't necessarily want to stick with the same movements for too long because then you miss out on the muscle confusion, the change of pace exercises that go about creating a better response in your muscles, okay? So those are my four tips. Real quickly, get more protein. So we're talking a gram per pound of body weight. We're talking about the idea of lifting heavy weights and not just staying with the lightweight movements. Third, I would say do those isolation exercises. Paired, obviously, you still want to stick with the functional movements, the full body movements, but add those into your routine. And lastly, you want to stick to a protocol that you can hold on to for a few weeks. And then after a few weeks where you've gotten the muscle response, that's when it's time to change it up. And if that's something you are not familiar with, you're not sure how to structure you can check out the training options we have uh, between the bumpers we got a host of different options for you guys i uh, hope you like this and uh yeah keep on training hard between the bumpers